Greetings Exiles and welcome to the best magic find tornado shot build that you will ever see in Path of Exile. This build isn't just made for maximizing profit, it can also dish out immense punishment to uber bosses. We deal around 100 million damage a second. Best part, this build can do all content including every single map mod like no region and no recovery. Hence, you won't have to look at your maps before running them. Spoiler alert, this build is extremely expensive. Alright, let us begin with our Ascendancy. We are a Deadeye, historically the best default Ascendancy choice for any bow build. First we go for Gathering Winds. This node gives us Tailwind buff and further increases its effect as you use your skills till reaching 20% more action speed. Easily the best speed node in all of Path of Exile. Next we got Ricochet. This node allows our projectiles to chain. It also gives them a small chance to chain off of walls which further increases our clearing speed. From here we path to Endless Munition. This node is a simple plus 2 additional projectiles to all projectile skills. Pretty straightforward. Last but not least we got Farshot. This node makes our arrows deal 80% of their original damage at the start of their movement, but increases it all the way to 160% after 70 units. If you are unsure whether to take this node or not because you don't know how to measure distance in Path of Exile, then just know that you reach maximum damage bonus at around the midpoint between you and the edge of the screen. It's pretty easy to min-max damage with distance with this node, especially against bosses. But with that we are done with our ascendancy. Now let's talk about our passive tree. Our tree focuses on bow damage, attack speed, crit chance and crit multi, cold damage, life, and most importantly, spell suppression. Next we got one large cluster jewel that adds the following notables, Durian's lesson, and Planketed snow. Now for mastery choices, we got increases and reductions to projectile speed also applies to damage while wielding a bow, 40% of physical damage converted to cold, chance to suppress spell damage is lucky, plus 25% to crit multiplier against unique enemies, and 8% increased damage per aura or herald affecting us. And that was it for our passive tree. Now let's go over our items. Remember that this build is very, very expensive, hence the word best you see in the title of the video. First we got a mirrored copy of Path of Exile's strongest rare bow, Dragon Thunder. This bow has 1100 physical DPS and plus 3 additional arrows. It's only held back with the fact that it doesn't have a crucible tree. Still, it's more than overkill for the purposes of this build. Next we got a mirrored copy of Eagle Stinger Rare Quiver. This is the older version to be specific, that has one fewer arrows. This thing just has everything from life, to damage, to crit chance and crit multi, and penetration. Anyway, our next item is a rare chest that I crafted myself by elevating item rarity support and elevating frenzy charge on hit. Then I combine them together with awakener's orb hoping to hit a third good suffix. When I did that, I just exalt spammed the prefixes until I hit tier 1 life. Then I locked the suffixes and I went asling to hit another hybrid life mod, and then crafted percent life to be done with it. Our next item is a mirrored helm with double mana reservation efficiency, 20% item quantity, and about 100% increased item rarity. Of course all of that on a base with the legacy tornado shot fires 2 additional secondary projectiles enchant. It doesn't get any better than this. Anyway our next item is an amulet that has life, flat physical damage, crit multi, movement speed and increased item quantity. If you haven't gotten the gist of it already, then know that the item quantity mod is legacy, meaning it only exists on standard. It's not mandatory to have on every item, but the more quantity you have, the more items you drop overall. Anyway, make sure to anoint sovereignty on your amulet as it enables our specific aura setup. Now next on the list we have Mageblood. Funny enough, Mageblood is literally the cheapest item in this whole build. It's best in slot for obvious reasons, although we mostly needed to reduce our mana cost to zero with the minus 25% mana cost of skills of last craft. Next we have a ring with life, increased item quantity, crit multi, flat fizz, and crafted minus flat mana cost to non channeling scales. Again we are trying to reduce our mana cost to zero in this build, and that's without using inspiration. Our second ring is pretty similar, having almost identical mods except that we crafted increased damage on this one instead. Now for our gloves, we have a pair that has life, increased item quantity, increased attack speed, added cold damage if we have crit recently, and most importantly, crafted 25% fizz converted to cold. This is mandatory to achieve 100% fizz to cold conversion in this build, otherwise you will deal less damage and you will die to fizz reflection. Last but not least we have a pair of boots that have movement speed, 
life, elusive on crit, increased item quantity, and lots of resistances. And that was it for our items. Now let's talk about gems that goes inside of them. For our main 6 link we have Tornado Shot, Awakened Elemental Damage with Attacks, Awakened Vicious Projectiles, Awakened Cold Penetration, Bone Chill, and Hypothermia. This setup goes in our chest to benefit from item rarity support that we have crafted there. Next for our second 6 link that goes in our bow, we have Hatred, Haste, Herald of Purity, Herald of Ice, Level 4 Enlighten, and Increased Item Quantity Support which is optional. Next we got a 4 link damage support setup. This one contains Sniper's Mark, Mark on Hit, Level 4 Enhance, and Life Tap Support. Last but not least we got a 4 link with some leftover gems. They are Max Level Precision, Low Level Vitality, Level 3 Enlighten, and the Portal Gem. And that was it for our gems. Now let's talk about jewels. Our Watcher's Eye have 40% physical damage converted to cold while affected by hatred and 15% cold penetration while also affected by hatred. Please note that the first mod is mandatory while the second one is optional. Next we got one Brutal Restraint Timeless Jewel that mentions any general. Place this one in this specific socket to maximize its effect. We are not using this jewel for its specific Legion Keystone, rather we focus on bonuses it provides to smaller nodes. We are looking for increased critical strike chance increased attack speed, life, elemental damage, and projectile damage. The point here is to keep looking for a timeless jewel that provides more overall bonuses than a good rare jewel. Once you find one, start using it. And speaking about rare jewels, any remaining jewel socket you have left should be filled with a normal rare jewel like this one. This one is 100% best in slot and you are going to need 3 identical copies of it if you want to fully min max your belt. These are not expensive to craft, hence I recommend you to manually make them by buying a fractured Viridian jewel that has increased attack speed with bows and then reforge life on it until you get all formats aligned. This is way cheaper than buying it already crafted. But with that we are done with our jewels. Now for bandits quest, we are going to help Elera as usual. As for pantheons, we got the soul of Lunaris and the soul of Ralakesh. And that was it for our best tornado shot build in the history of Path of Exile. If you guys have enjoyed this video, then feel free to leave a like and maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any future build guides like this one. Also, if you are interested in buying the build, then I already have it for sale. But anyway, my name is Phoenix and I will see you all in the next video.